So, uh, like Dima mentioned, hi, I'm Drake Luce. Um, uh, so yeah, my presentation is about Java instrumentation. Uh, so we're going to cover, uh, cover a couple things today. Um, if you could keep the questions till the end, uh, that'd be great. Um, so we're going to cover what instrumentation is, um, uh, what instrumentation is, uh, sort of the motivation behind using instrumentation generally, um, the type of the types of attachment that we can use to attach uh, instrumentation to Java. Um, using the JVM's tools, uh, creating an agent, uh, so uh, we need to attach an, aj an agent, so we also need to create an agent. Uh, determining the target, uh, JVM PID, so essentially determining what we're going to be attaching to. Um, using Java Assist to do bytecode manipulation, uh, so once we attach, what are we going to do with the bytecode that we attach to. And finally, uh, using Java Snoop to find target classes and methods to attach to. So what is instrumentation? Uh, instrumentation is essentially inserting performance or sort of execution monitoring code into an existing Java process. Um, it's often used for essentially uh, monitoring the length of the execution of methods, uh, usually for performance uh, or uh, software that requires very performance heavy uh, computation. Uh, so, for example, if you're doing something like Bitcoin mining, uh, you're calculating SHA-256 a lot, uh, and in that case you want to know exactly how long it takes for you to do one round of SHA-256. Um, so instrumentation can be used for those legitimate methods, but it can also be used for illegitimate methods uh, like hacking, etc. So what's the motivation behind using instrumentation? Um, so you could insert performance monitoring code directly into your source, uh, though that complicates things a little bit. Uh, it, it increases the binary size, so if you have an application uh, that's supposed to be very uh, lightweight, or you have an application that's very security dependent, so uh, you have a lot of tests that are running, and you really just want, don't want to modify the existing binary. Uh, that's what instrumentation is sort of about. Um, so instrumentation is very general and flexible, so uh, really we can write a, an instrumentation agent and attach it to any existing JVM process. So if we have, uh, like I mentioned, a Bitcoin client, or we could have uh, a password manager, or any Java application we can attach instrumentation to. <coughs> uh, so uh, in particular, we're interested in dynamic instrumentation. Uh, though we will cover static in instrumentation as well. Uh, the reason dynamic instrumentation is so interesting is that if we have a long-running JVM process, so for example, if we're running like a Java server, uh, like a web server or something like that, we really can't shut down the server or uh, modify the source code or um, do anything else to the server to, to stop its execution. Um, uh, but we can use dynamic instrumentation to sort of uh, intrude on processes that are running and then detach from them so that uh, they will continue running and uh, we haven't really affected anything. Although we can affect things and we will see that shortly. So there's two types of attachment uh, in uh, Java instrumentation in particular. There's static attachment, which is essentially uh, attaching the instrumentation as soon as the Java process is started. So uh, we use something called the Java agent command line flag or a parameter, and that essentially, whenever we run the Java process, we include that flag, and then that agent is loaded with the Java process. Um, the agent is entered into via the pre-made method, and we're going to touch on that in a little bit. Um, there's also dynamic attachment, which we're mostly interested in, and uh, that's attaching to a completely separate running process. Uh, so essentially, we create an attacher process, which attaches the agent to our target process. Uh, and the agent is entered into via the agent main method. And again, we'll touch on that a little bit later. So static attachment. Uh, very simple. We have our agent and we have our JVM process. Uh, and we attach it via the uh, Java agent command line parameter. So uh, essentially, all we have to write is our agent. Um, the agent is... Uh, can handle everything except for the attachment, and we do that via the command line parameter. Um, 
and then the average ADM process, which is starting along with the agent. So for example, uh, if we're running target.jar, usually we just do java jar target.jar. But if we want to attach an agent, we can do java java agent colon, and then our agent uh, path, and then we can do target.jar. So dynamic attachment's a little bit different. Uh, we have two modules instead of one, which are responsible for attaching and executing the functionality agent. Uh, so we have our VM agent, which is the same thing as the previous slide, uh, but we're just attaching it a little bit differently. So we also have our VM agent attacher, which is, a, which is a completely separate Java process and is responsible for attaching the agent. Uh, the VM agent attacher uses the com.sun.tools.attach API, uh, and essentially Java already exposes all this functionality, we're just using it. So, uh, our VM agent attacher, very simple um, in terms of, uh, it's a very low code footprint, um, but there's a couple things that we will cover in a little bit that makes this a little bit more complicated than it seems. Uh, so basically, uh, we instantiate our virtual machine, which is basically connecting to the, the um, JVM, and we say, hey, we want to attach to this PID 42215. Um, we don't know what that PID is yet. Uh, we're just coding it directly. Uh, we'll look a little bit later at how we can determine what that PID is. But this is supposed to be a little minimalistic. Um, so we attach to our PID, and we load our agent, VM agent uh, We can pass an optional parameter if we want to. Um, and then once the agent is loaded, we can attach from the VM. And that's it. That's all the VM agent attaching us. So the agent, uh, we've been talking about attachment. What are we attaching? We're attaching the agent. So the agent, uh, it looks fairly, fairly simple. Uh, we have two, uh, two methods. We have our agent main and we have our pre-main. Uh, the difference between these is when you're attaching dynamically, uh, the uh, instrumentation will attach via the agent main method. So as soon as it's attached, it will call the agent main method. Um, it's exactly the same as statically attaching. It just calls the pre-main method ins instead. Um, and in this case, we're doing the same thing, just printing a different text so we know how we're attaching. And then we're adding our bytecode transformer. So essentially, um, I'm going to go to the next slide. The bytecode byte code transformer is really what the agent is. Uh, this is a very simple example. The only thing that we do is print out the bytecode. So, uh, once we attach the agent, essentially the agent is responsible for taking in bytecode, doing something to it, and then returning the bytecode. So anytime a method is called, this method will be called as well in the agent, passing the bytecode of the method that was called. And then we can say, hey, uh, let's just print the bytecode. So I print uh, the bytes to a hex string so it's more uh, readable, and then we return the bytecode. Um, this doesn't actually modify anything. Uh, but it's more just a uh, sort of instrumentation that doesn't do any modification. Um, uh, and the other thing to note about an agent is that when you're compiling the jar for an agent, you have to let Java know that the pre-main and the agent classes uh, have, their func uh, have their main methods in the VM agent class. Um, typically, we only have one class uh, in the agent um, for, for starting, well, you, you could probably have multiple classes, but uh, in this example, we have one class, and it is the same class, the um, agent. Class path, Java Assist.jar, that's something we'll touch on in a little bit. Uh, we're going to be using a thing called Java Assist, so we're just including that, but we haven't used it yet. So target, what are we attaching to? Uh, right now, I just have a very simplistic example. Uh, you'll notice it throws an interrupted exception, and the only reason that is is we're using thread.sleep. Uh, if we're not using thread.sleep, this is a very basic Java program. There's nothing different. This is Java 101. Uh, so we just say hello world, we sleep, and then we call alpha sleep, beta sleep, yeah. Um, and they just print out some characters. <clears throat> so um, this was our uh, attacher earlier. And uh, you'll notice that we attach to a PID, which is uh, directly defined in our source code. Now, that's not really the ideal way of doing things, because 
if you attach to a PID directly in your source code, uh, when you go to attach another time uh, with a different JVM process, or you've closed the JVM process and opened it again, it'll very likely, well, actually, it will have a different PID. Um, so we, we need to think of a way to get that PID dynamically. Um, so let's take a look at that. How can we find the PID? So determining PID uh, is actually fairly simple. Java exposes uh, some functions in their, uh, their JVM API, which essentially allow us to um, create a virtual, me uh, virtual machine descriptor and uh, basically list through each JVM process that's currently running. Um, so what we do here is our first argument for our VM agent attacher is the agent that we're going to be attaching, uh, the path to it, relative or absolute, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have our target substring. So essentially, when we go through listing the JVMs that we want to attach to, uh, the target substring is a substring in one of those JVMs that identifies the one that we want to attach to. So if we want to, we could just list through them, find what, uh, find what that target, target substring is, and then we can pass it into this program. Um, typically, when you run a Java program, uh, like if you do ja uh, java hyphen jar and then do I don't know, target dot jar, the string that shows up here will be target dot jar. So in this case, if we want to attach to the target, our target substring could be target. I realize that's a little confusing. <laughs> um, the other thing to note is, because this VM agent attacher is also going to be a running Java process when we're attaching, um, if we pass in our target parameter, um, the, uh, the target substring that we're trying to attach to, it will also be included in the VM agent attacher. So essentially, if that PID shows up before the actual thing we're trying to attach to, we will attach to ourselves. Uh, and that's a problem. Uh, so essentially what we do is we determine the PID of this process that's running and we make sure that uh, we don't attach to that PID because if we do, we'll run into an error. Uh, so we're only going to attach to PIDs that contain the target substring but are also not this process. Um, so yeah, we loop through and if it contains the target substring, fantastic, we found it. We'll, we'll save that in our variable PID. So if we haven't found the PID by the time that loop finishes, we can say, hey, we didn't find the target substring, that's okay. Um, otherwise, we can do the same thing as we did before. We instantiate a VM. Uh, well, we don't instantiate a VM. We instantiate a VM object, which attaches to the PID. We load the agent, same as before. This time we pass in the agent path from our parameters, our command line parameters, uh, and then we print out that we attached and detach. Uh, and just to clarify, this vm.detach is not detaching the agent from the target, it's just detaching the vm uh, which attaches the agent. Uh, so it's a, there's a sort of thing to keep in mind there. So we're going to do our first demo here. Um, hopefully this works live. Uh, oh, that's already a problem. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this up. I did have these already attached, but it seems they timed out, so Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, first we'll type out Java dash jar target dash jar. So essentially, we're just going to run our target program, uh, but we're not going to do that, do that yet. We're going to type in the other string so we can run it immediately as soon as we start our target program. Uh, 
And this time we're going to run our VM uh, attacher, so that, that will attach the agent to this process that we're about to run. So VM agent attacher. And then uh, the first command line parameter is the path to the agent that we want to attach. So agent attacher. I'm not sure what in there. And then finally, uh, our last command line parameter is just the target substring that we're trying to target. So in this case, we're trying to target target.jar. So we can just we can type in target.jar, we can type in target, it doesn't matter. So uh, I'm just going to type in target. So I'm going to run my program here, and I'm going to run my attacher. The agent is injected into the PID, which was found by the target substring. And then in this case, our agent is just printing of the bytecode. So anytime a method is called, uh, immediately before the method is called, it'll print up the bytecode. And that's all our agent does, which is sort of boring. Uh, so yeah, let's move on from that, and we'll come back here in a second. Uh, so yeah, we determined our PID. Uh, so yeah, printing bytecode to the console, not very useful. I mean, we could just hex edit the, uh, the Java methods if you want to. Um, so yeah, it's not very useful. How could we instead actually do something with this bytecode? Uh, we could manipulate it, we could insert our own code into it. Um, so let's see how we can do that. Uh, so Java Assist is uh, what we're going to use to do bytecode manipulation. And Java Assist is essentially an API that uh, exposes a bunch of functions that you can use to manipulate Java bytecode. Um, it can be used in conjunction with uh, our Java instrumentation that we saw before. So once we get that bytecode, we're not just going to print it, we're going to pass it to Java Assist, and Java Assist will do the rest. Um, so this was our previous uh, transform, just printing out the bytecode. Um, so let's, uh, let's import some things, and let's change that up. So we import Java Assist, the class pool, the CT class, the, the CT method, uh, and we're going to use it. So um, what we do here is similar to before, uh, but this case, in this case we're only going to target a certain class uh, because before we were instrumenting every class, and that's not really desirable since we're also instrumenting the base Java classes. Uh, we just want to instrument our class. So in this case, instrumented class is just going to be target, so we're only instrumenting our own class. Um, and then we get to see if our class name is target, uh, and if it is, then we move into this. So uh, we create a class pool, and class pool is essentially a singleton uh, that sort of keeps uh, sort of consistency across uh, multiple modifications. Um, it's uh, sort of a, it's an advanced topic, so I'm not going to go too far into it. But we do need a class pool to do this. Um, so we got the default class pool. Uh, we make a class. So essentially, we use the class pool. We make a class, and we pass in the Java bytecode that we were passed by the Java instrumentation. Uh, so essentially, we're building a class object that we can do things to. We can call methods, we can modify things. Uh, so we have our CD class, and then we call the method get, the deco uh, get declared methods, which will return a list of methods that are in the class that we're instrumenting. Um, so for each method, we're just going to print out the name of the method. Um, and then finally, uh, you'll notice we're setting bytecode here. So we're actually changing the value that was given to us by the Java instrumentation. Uh, in this case, we haven't actually changed anything about the method, so we should get the same bytecode back. Um, but we are setting it here anyway. Uh, and then we detach. Uh, and then uh, we just return the bytecode down below, which returns the bytecode to the Java uh, JVM. Cool. Um, so 
Uh, one other thing we can do is actually modify the bytecode. Because I mean that, again, was just printing things about the bytecode. That's modified bytecode. So uh, for each method, um, same as before, uh, this time we're going to do something with it. Uh, we call the add local variable insert before you insert after. So add local variable descriptive, it adds local variable to the top of the method. Um, so in this case, we're going to add start time and end time. And that is going to let us do uh, basically performance monitoring. So how many uh, microseconds does it take for the, I believe it's nanoseconds, does it take for the uh, method to complete? <coughs> uh, so our start time is system.nanotime, uh, and we insert that before the method call. So before any of the uh, existing bytecode is called, uh, we do system.nanotime and we save it in that variable. And then insert after puts code right after the Java bytecode. Uh, so it essentially is equivalent to putting that line in your source code. Um, so we're going to get the end time as well. And then finally, we're going to insert one more line at the end, which just uh, prints the delta time of that uh, method call. So uh, we're just doing a, a string concatenation here with an empty string. That's just to convert the long to a string. Uh, it's not important. Uh, and then finally, we actually have changed the bytecode this time. So we call CD class to bytecode and we detach. So here's demo number two. And luckily we're still attached here. Let me get my mouse over there. <coughs> Uh, actually, we're only going to need one terminal this time. Uh, so last time I attached dynamically using the VM agent attacher. Uh, this time, uh, because we want to make sure that we capture the method that we're trying to instrument, I'm going to attach statically at the beginning of the process so every method is instrumented. Uh, so in that case, we're going to use the static instrumentation method, which is just Java, and then that's Java agent. And then I'm going to put the path to the VM agent that I want to attach. So, jar. And then, uh, just like normal, calling a jar, I'm going to put a jar and then our target. So we attach statically. Uh, Hello world is the beginning of our of our target program. Uh, alpha, and then we, uh, if you remember, at the end of uh, each method call, we're adding that little delta time print. So uh, this is the delta time for the alpha method, the delta time for the beta method, and the delta time for the gamma method. And then finally, we have the delta time for the main method, which uh, takes significantly longer than the rest because it also includes those thread.sleeps. Um, and that's why that one takes so long. Uh, okay. So uh, we've talked about instrumenting methods, but we haven't really talked about how to determine which methods we want to instrument. I mean, if we, if we wrote the program we're instrumenting ourselves, we of course know what methods we want to instrument. We can look at the source code. But what if we don't have the source code? What if, uh, what if we have to determine that dynamically? Um, so let's find a method to instrument. Uh, so we could use Java Assist. We could attach an agent and just print every method of every class. Uh, I mean you would need to go through and uh, manually determine the functionality of each class and manually determine the sort of flow of uh, sort of, if you have an artifact, like if you type foobar into your program, where does that flow through your program? Which methods does it touch? Uh, it would be difficult to do that with just the Java Assist um, API. So we could also use a thing called JavaScript, and JavaScript is a, basically a toolkit for analyzing running JVM processes and also adding instrumentation to it. So you could do the instrumentation prog uh, programmatically, or you could attach it using Java Snoop, which is a little bit more user friendly. Um, we can use a thing called canary mode, which is like what I mentioned. Uh, for example, if you type foobar into an application, um, canary mode will see exactly where that line flows through. So Every method that was touched by that string, you'll see show up, and then you can determine what you want to instrument. So 
So I'll go to here. And, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is run JavaScript. And it just opens up and says, hey, do you want to start a new process and attach, or do you want to attach to an existing process? In this case, we're going to attach to an existing process. And we're going to run that process over here. Uh, that process that we're attaching to is called MindTerm, and that's just an SSH client. Uh, essentially, it's just for connecting to servers and, and doing things on servers. I just SSH to my server earlier. Um, so yeah, we launch MindTerm. Uh, over here, we click, we click that we want to um, connect to an existing process, and then we select the process that we want to attach to. So that's good. Uh, now here, I'm going to type in foobar uh, and let MindTerm try to connect to that. Of course, foobar is not a real host name. Uh, that's just because sometimes JavaScript doesn't detect classes unless they've already been used. It's sort of a strange thing. Uh, so I'm just doing that first to make sure that it actually detects when I type in the actual host name I want to detect. So that's fine. Um, now we can get started. So up here, uh, I'm going to click Actions and Start Canary Mode. And canary mode is sort of like that uh, search for the artifact thing. So start canary mode. And then I'm going to type in localhost, which is the port, or sorry, the host that I want to connect to. Um, and then I click start canary mode. So essentially, what JavaScript has done, it has gone through every single class and every single method in this running JVM process, the SSH client. And it's attached instrument instrumentation to every class and every method, or sorry, every method rather. Um, and so whenever we do something in our target process, we can see that show up here, uh, so long as it matches our target uh, artifact. So I'm going to type localhost into the client, and you can see JavaScript has detected that that artifact has passed through um, get port and get host methods in the SSH client. So over here, uh, I'm probably going to click get host because that seems more um, relevant to what I'm looking for, the host names. So I'm going to stop canary mode, and I'm going to add a hook to get host. I'm going to click up here to enable the hook to make sure that it captures whenever I uh, do my uh, do the actual uh, de determining the host name the next time I type it in. Uh, so now we don't know what we're going to type in the next time, but we are hooking that method so we can see what the values are that are passed through. Uh, so we click enable. Uh, we uh, can click down here to print parameters. So anytime the method is called, it's going to print uh, the parameters, and then we can choose to console to file. So to console, which will print it right here. And then if we go back to our SSH client, and this time we're going to type in a host name. Um, and as you can see, uh, JavaScript detected, hey, um, this method was called, and this was the parameter for that method. Uh, if you want to, you can actually click tamper with return value at any time that method is called. Instead of returning whatever that host name is, you can enter your own host name. Um, so you can see how there, there's definitely potential for malicious um, programs attaching to other programs and sort of changing the return values and doing things like that. Um, now, JavaScript is sort of like a GUI application that lets you do this um, more easily without writing any code. But all of this functionality can also be implemented using just straight Java Assist and the Java Implementation API that I described earlier. Okay. And that's it.